chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again in this lecture we shall discuss the common properties of a triangle these properties no one can miss questions are always there that are based on these properties and i have collected the best material for you let us see how we start with our study of triangles a triangle is usually drawn like this this is a this is b this is c these are the vertices the side opposite this b is called small b the side opposite this is called small c and the side opposite this is called small a therefore if a b c are the angles then a b and c are the lengths of the sides opposite to each angle we have already seen that a plus b plus c is 180 degrees which i am listing here now the new part the inequality for triangles it is most commonly called the triangle inequality this inequality states that any side of a triangle for example side c you can take or you can take side b any side is less than the sum of the sides of the other two two sides of the triangle you can even imagine it like this that in a ground three points are taken a to c will be shorter as compared to going by this longer route this is called the triangle inequality which you should remember and there are questions that have been asked in question papers of the previous years where this triangle inequality was used to determine something about the triangle for example he will give you four or five lengths and then say how many triangles can be formed out of these so on that question you have to make use of the triangle inequality to determine how many triangles can be formed we will take that we will take those questions separately but let us now list the theoretical things that are available for a triangle to us then there is another aspect this is called form 1 or type 1 or shape 1 of the triangle inequality the other form is a form 2 is also there which says that we can let us see transpose a to the other side which says that difference of two sides difference of two sides is always less than the third side this is another form of the triangle inequality sum of two sides is more than the third difference of two sides is always less than the third side so you should remember these two forms they will come handy many times let us now move on to the types of triangles questions are always asked in which the definition of a type should be well known to you so one of the types is called the acute angled triangle acute angled triangle in this triangle each angle each angle is less than 90 degrees for every angle so if i draw a triangle like this then we can see that each angle of this triangle is less than 90 degrees 
therefore this is called an acute angled triangle an example of acute angled triangle is equilateral triangle equilateral triangle is an acute angled triangle because each angle is 60 degrees which is less than 90 degrees so this is one quality of an acute angled triangle let me now tell you about the second quality of an acute angled triangle the longest side the longest side property if c is the longest side if c is the longest side then c square is always less than a square plus b square in case of an acute angled triangle so a triangle with sides 5 cm 6 cm and 7 cm is acute angled because because longest is 7 Seven square is forty nine, and five square plus six square is equal to twenty five plus thirty six, which is equal to sixty one. Seven square is less than the sum of squares of other two sides. Therefore, this triangle is acute angled triangle. We do not have to draw it on paper. This inequality will help you determine straight way. in a shortcut manner questions have been asked in the examinations which expected a candidate to know about this inequality also this is one type of triangle which is called acute angled now let me take the second type of triangle which is called obtuse angled triangle second type is obtuse angled triangle in case of an obtuse angled triangle one angle is more than 90 degrees so if i draw a triangle like this and label its sides as a b and c and uh, vertices as a b and c the side is c this side is a this side is b then this angle is greater than 90 degrees therefore this is an obtuse angled triangle and in case of obtuse angled triangle the longest side property is the longest side property is that the square of the longest side is more than the sum of the squares of the other two sides this is also an important property because this property will help you determine without actually drawing a triangle whether that triangle is obtuse angled or not so a triangle with sides 5 6 and 10 is obtuse angled because the longest side is 10 and 10 square is 100 the sum of squares of the other two sides we have already calculated in our previous example which is 61 since 100 is more than 61 so this triangle will be an obtuse angled triangle we do not have to draw it it can be determined only on the basis of the sides that are available to us but please also note i will write a caution there will be many three triads in which the highest will be greater than the sum of the squares of the other two but each triad may not represent a triangle because you have to check also that 5 plus 6 should be more than 10 this pair should be more than 10 similarly 5 plus 10 should be more than 6 
Similarly, 6 plus 10 should be more than 5. This inequality has to be satisfied at all costs. So, do not blindly go for checking this inequality. First of all, you should make a check of this triangle inequality. Once this inequality succeeds, that is all pairs are more than their respective third side, then only you should go for checking this. Ok, let me move to the third types of triangles which are called right angled triangles. A right angle triangle has one angle that is exactly equal to 90 degrees. So, it will look like this. This angle is 90 degrees. It is represented by a square sign. So, if we write this as C, this as B, this as A, this will be side C, this will be side A, this will be side B. So, it has one angle that is exactly equal to 90 degrees. This is one property. The second is the other two. The other two angles are complementary. What does this mean? That sum of angle A and sum of angle B will be 90 degrees in this diagram if angle C is equal to 90 degrees. This you can understand from that angle also that if C is 90 then the sum of other two should be 90 because the total of all the three angles has to be 180 degrees. And the third property is that the square of the longest side is exactly equal to the sum of squares of the other two sides. This equation is called the Pythagoras theorem, which almost everybody is aware. So, a right angle triangle will have one angle that is 90, the other two will be complementary and the longest side square is equal to sum of squares of the other two sides. Now, let me make a summary chart for all the three types of the triangles. So, on here I will write angle and I will draw a horizontal line and here I will write longest side. So, I will make three partitions. First is the acute angled triangle, acute triangle. In the acute triangle, each angle is less than 90 degrees and C square is less than A square plus B square where C is the longest side. And in case of a right triangle, one angle is 90 degrees, other two complementary and C square is exactly equal to A square plus B square. The third is the obtuse triangle. In case of obtuse triangle, one angle is more than 90 degrees and C square is more than A square plus B square. This is the chart that you can keep in mind. And if you want to remember this inequality, this angle is always same as this 90 degrees. 
If each angle is less than 90, then C square will be less. If one angle is equal to, then this is also equal to. If here it is greater sign, then here also it is greater sign. So this should be in your mind always. Let us now move on to the various types of centroid, incenter, circumcenter, and orthocenter. So I will start with the definition of a median. So there are four types of points here as listed here below centroid, incenter, circumcenter and orthocenter. First of all, I'll take up the concept of median. It is related to centroid. Similarly, other will be related to incenter, then to circumcenter, then to orthocenter. Median is what? Line joining. the vertex of a triangle to the midpoint of opposite side is called a median. Let me draw a diagram for this. If this is a triangle this is the midpoint of this side, then this is one of the medians. Median. This cross, this cross or tick, this means that this side, this length is equal to this length. This is the midpoint of this side. This midpoint is connected to the opposite vertex by a line called median. So the properties there are three medians. There are three medians corresponding to each vertex. Second thing, they all always meet in a common point, in a common point called centroid. So if I were to draw the other mid, let this be the midpoint. This is that. If this is the midpoint, then this is, then this is called the centroid. The point where all the medians of a triangle they meet, they will always meet. That point is called the centroid. Third property, the centroid divides a median in the ratio 2 is to 1 as shown. This is also the basis of many questions in your exams. Let me draw a triangle with just one median so that you understand what I am trying to say. This is the median and if this is the point, then this length is always 2 and this length is always 1. That is, greater number, greater factor is towards the vertex. So this is the, always this one is 2 and this is 1. So if I have to label in this diagram, then this part, this is the median, then this will be 2, this will be 1. Similarly, if I label this, from the vertex will be greater to the remaining part is 1 and likewise this is 2 and this is 1. The longer section is towards the vertex. We will solve many questions based on this requirement. Then you will understand it even more. Now let me take up about this is one median I have taken. Let me take about the altitudes now. Okay, one more point is there. Median is always in the center. Median is always, always inside the triangle. The median of any triangle 
always lies within the boundaries of that triangle. It cannot go outside the triangle. So this you should remember also. Now let me take what are altitude. Altitude. Suppose this is one triangle and if I draw a perpendicular from each vertex to the opposite side then this is called the altitude. My line is not straight but you can see that this is a straight line. If this is ABC then an altitude is perpendicular on the opposite side on the opposite side from a vertex is called a perpendicular is called a altitude. Now there are three altitudes there are three altitudes in a triangle. This is obvious because there are three vertices so there will be three altitudes. Let me draw them side by side here. This is one and this is the third one. Second, all of them always meet in a common point called ortho center. It is spelled like this, this one, ortho center. So in this diagram, this is the ortho center. So if from a vertex we draw a perpendicular to the opposite side and repeat this for each vertex, then the common point is called the ortho center. Third thing, ortho center may or may not lie in the triangle. Ortho center can fall outside a triangle also. So if I can show it to you, supposing this is one triangle. Now if I draw a uh, perpendicular to the opposite side, this, uh, this side will have to be produced and then only I will be able to draw this altitude. If you see, this altitude is entirely outside the, the triangle. I had to produce this side to draw an altitude from this point to the opposite side. This triangle was of such a shape that I had to produce this side. So if the altitude is entirely outside, obviously the point at which other two will meet will also lie outside. So if you want, you can make a small check also. Let us produce this one and this altitude will be here. And in fact, I will have to extend this altitude and this altitude to some point very much outside here. And for the third one, this will be the altitude and extended backwards, all of them they meet at a point outside the entire original triangle. So these are the definitions and qualities of an orthocenter that you should be aware of. Let us now take about the perpendicular bisectors. We have taken the medians we have taken the altitude. Now let us take their third counterpart which is called the perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. Now what does this mean? See with the help of a diagram once again. 
if we take the midpoint of one side just like we took in the case of median and draw a perpendicular here. So this is a straight line because I can't draw straight line here. In if I had connected this point, I'll just show these ticks so that these are equal. If I had connected this point to this vertex, it would become a median. But I am drawing a perfect 90 degrees angle at this point, then this is called a perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector. There are three perpendicular bisectors. Corresponding to each side. This is the midpoint. Draw a perpendicular. So I use two ticks to say that these are equal. Take the midpoint. This is equal to this one and draw a perpendicular. If I draw these perpendiculars very accurately, then they will meet at a common point. All of them always meet in a common point. called circum center this one now what is the physical meaning of this circum center circum center means if i place my compass needle here and open it to this vertex or this vertex or this vertex and draw a circle then the entire triangle will be inscribed in that circle so we would say circumcenter circumcenter is the center of a triangle is the center of a circle is the center of a circle that will inscribe or contain the entire triangle and passes through each vertex. So that is why it is called the circumcenter, the center of the circle that will inscribe this triangle completely. It may or may not, may or may not lie inside the triangle. So we can verify this also. So I'll draw a circle here. Suppose this is a circle and this is one center. And if a triangle is drawn in such a way so that it doesn't contain this uh, center like this one if you see that it is possible to draw a triangle that may not pass or contain this center and still that triangle be lying on the circle so that this whole circle acts as a circumcircle for this triangle then this point will be seen that it will be the circumcenter and if we draw all the perpendicular bisectors then they will meet at this point which is lying outside the circus, outside the triangle so these four things there are three perpendicular bisectors all of them always meet in a common point called circumcenter that is point like this or point like this Circumcenter is the center of a circle that will inscribe or contain the entire triangle and it passes through each vertex. The circumcircle 
passes through each vertex of the triangle. It may or may not be inside the triangle because this center may lie inside just in this situation or may lie outside like in this situation. Let us next take our fourth and final part which is called the angle bisector. Angle bisector. So what is it? Let this be a triangle. If we bisect each angle of the triangle and draw a straight line, this one, this one, then this is called the angle bisector. On the same pattern, there are three angle bisectors. of all the three interior angles. In fact, they have to be three because there are three angles and let us now draw each of them roughly. Then The nature is such that these three will also intersect. They all always intersect in a common point called in center. This is also very commonly asked in your exams. Practically, in center is the center of a circle, is the center of a circle which is contained in the triangle, contained in the triangle and touches all the three sides, all the three sides. So if I draw a circle on this, so as to touch one of the sides, this circle will be entirely contained inside the triangle and it will touch all the three sides as tangents then this circle is called the in circle and this common point as we have already said is called the in center. Obviously in center must always be in the triangle. Just like medians, median and in center will always be in the boundary of the entire triangle because the triangle contains the entire circle therefore its center must obviously be contained inside the triangle. So before I close let me draw a summary table for you. So these are the summary points. Let me explain. The medians meet at centroid, they lie entirely inside the, inside the triangle and they split each, the centroid splits, centroid, centroid splits each median in the ratio 2 is to 1 with 2 closer to the vertex and 1 closer to the side. So that already we have discussed. So this 2 is this side and this is the one part. The altitudes they meet at orthocenter, they can lie anywhere inside or outside. No special property was discussed. Perpendicular bisectors, they cut at the circumcenter. 
they can lie anywhere inside or outside the circle inside or outside the triangle sorry and the special property is that a circle that contains the triangle can be drawn through the circumcenter angle bisectors they meet at in center in center always lies inside the triangle and the circle that is contained inside the triangle can be drawn by placing the compass needle at the in center so this summary table is what summarizes the entire concepts i'll close it right now in the next tutorial we are ready for the examples tough exam level questions so that you can even more understand what i have taught 